This video will show how to solve series parallel combination circuits for electronics. The easiest way to do this, I found, is if you follow these simple steps. First, draw the current path through the circuit to identify what components are in series and what components are in parallel. Drawing the current path helps you to identify this. Second, if you color code the wires to identify voltage drops that occur throughout the circuit, that will help you to keep track of which resistors have the same voltage drops. Third, I use a technique called redraws to combine parallel and series components. And then fourth step is to calculate parallel resistances and then series resistances. Fifth, you identify what you need to find, then identify what you need to know in order to find it. And sixth, you'll use Ohm's law repeatedly to find unknown values. Just Ohm's law over and over again. And then seventh, remember that parallel voltage drops are the same and series currents are the same. So here's an example circuit. Any electronic circuit, no matter how complicated, can be simplified down to sets of series and parallel components. Now I've shown all resistors, but any electronic component can act like a resistor. Uh, for example, a, a speaker, a motor, a light, any of those components can act like a resistance. So we'll just symbolize them with resistances here. Now step one would be to draw the current path through this circuit. So I'm going to use a green highlighter and highlight this current path through the circuit. Now notice as I first come down from the voltage source uh, and get to this point the current splits. Some of it going to the right, some of it going to the left, and some of it going through the center. So as you follow these currents through these resistors, you can see that these resistors would be in parallel as the current divides up and then at the end comes back and recombines at this point to go through resistor 4. After getting through resistor 4, the current again splits, some to the left and some to the right. That identifies for us that R6 and R7 are in series as the same current goes through each of them. Then the current goes through R5 on the left, R6 and 7 on the right, comes back together at this point where it all goes to ground. So drawing the current path helped me to identify that R1, R2, and R3 are parallel, R6 and R7 are in series, and R6 and 7 together are in parallel with R5. The next technique is to use color coding of the wires to identify voltage drops. I use a red voltage to indicate the highest level of voltage and that would be from the voltage source. So this wire is red and anything connected to that wire is going to have the same voltage. So these wires being red indicate the highest voltage level. Voltage again is like pressure so it takes some pressure or some voltage to push the current through those resistances, through those resistors. So on the opposite side of the resistors there there will be a drop in the pressure along those resistors. So on the opposite side there will be a lower voltage. And we'll indicate that with this purplish color. And it's going to stay that voltage level until it hits the next resistor, R4. And then again voltage level drops as it pushes current through that resistor. We'll use a light green color to indicate this voltage level. The lowest voltage level possible would be at the ground voltage level. I'll indicate that with a dark blue color. So if you notice, R5 drops whatever voltage is remaining to get all the way to zero. So it starts at uh, red with 9 volts, drops some voltage to go to purple, drops more voltage to go to green, drops all the rest of the voltage and ends at zero at, at blue. But R6 can't drop all the rest of the voltage or there'd be none left to push through R7. So I'm going to draw a different color separating in between R6 and R7 perhaps a light blue to indicate that there's still some voltage that uh, needs to drop across R7. Okay, so next step would be to do a series of redraws of the circuit, combining resistors that we can combine. So this is what I've labeled on this slide the original circuit, so you can look at that and refer to that, and the first redraw. And notice in the redraw that I've combined R1, R2, and R3 in parallel. And I use this notation of these uh, slash marks to indicate in parallel. Then also notice R6 and R7 have been combined and they're in series and I use a plus sign to indicate that things are in series. So I've, I've drawn both on this redraw. Now the thing to do on this redraw step is to calculate what those resistance values would be for those combinations of resistors. So for calculating resistance in parallel the formula is 1 over 1 over R1 plus
plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus however many resistors you have. To do our calculation for our example, the numbers would be 1 over 1 over 560 plus 1 over 890 plus 1 over 1200. Now on the original circuit it shows 1.2 K ohms or 1.2 kilo ohms. Remember 1.2 K ohms is the same as 1200 ohms. Now on my calculator, I happen to use a TI-84 Plus. What I use is uh, the X to the minus 1 button, or the 1 over X button. If you look on your calculator and you have a 1 over X button or an X to the minus 1, what that means is it, it takes a value and takes its reciprocal. Uh, so I enter it into my calculator as follows. 560 X to the minus 1 plus 890 x to the minus 1 plus 1200 and then x to the minus 1 and then if I hit enter that gives me the value of the denominator of this fraction but then if I take that answer if I just hit on my calculator if I just hit x to the minus 1 the display indicates it's taking that answer and taking the inverse of that or the reciprocal of that so I get answer for the total resistance which in this case is 724.533 5079. Depending on the accuracy of your initial uh, values to put into the equation, your answer can't be more precise or more accurate than your, your inputs. So I should probably round this to the nearest ohm. But I'm going to leave this value as it is for now. And if I use this value to calculate any additional values, then I won't have compounded rounding errors. If I round it too soon and then use that rounded value to calculate more values, each time I round, it compounds the, the rounding errors. So I'll leave this as it is for now, and then my final answer, I can round it as I want. For resistor 1, 2, and 3 in parallel, my value is 724.5335079 ohms. And for resistors 6 and 7 that are in series, remember in series, resistors are just added up. So that's a very easy calculation, 500 ohms plus 200 ohms, it's just 700 ohms. And that finishes my first redraw. But I can simplify this circuit even further if I do a second redraw. The second redraw shows that I can further combine resistors. So if I combine R1, 2, and 3, that parallel combination, with resistor 4 that is in series, and then I also show that R6 plus R7 can be combined in parallel with R5. Now I can solve those calculations. So on my calculator I would enter 700 x to the minus 1 plus 730 x to the minus 1, enter x to the minus 1, and then hit enter again and I get my answer as 357.3426573 ohms. Now one way to, there is a special way to do two resistors in parallel a different formula instead of the 1 over 1 over method. There's another way called the product over the sum method. And that's to take the product of the two resistors, in this case 700 times 730, and then divide that by the sum. You'll get the same answer, 357.3426573. This product over the sum formula, but it only works with two resistors in parallel. If you have more than two resistors, you, you need to use the 1 over 1 over method. So I tend to use the 1 over 1 over method all the time because it works no matter how many resistors you have in parallel. So I've calculated R5 in parallel with R6 plus R7. And the other combination of resistors is easy. Since they're in series, I can just add them up. And since R4 is just 100 ohms, I can add that to my 267 ohms, and I get 367.1908506 ohms. And any circuit can be simplified to a single resistance. The redraw 3 shows all of the calculations. I would need to put these two separate ones from redraw 2 in series with each other, so I'll just add them together. For my total resistance, 724.5335079 ohms. Once I know my total resistance, the next step really is to write a list or a table of what you need to find. If I needed to find the total resistance by doing the series of redraws, I've just found that. So I'll list that in my table. And at this point, this is where I would round. So I'm going to round to the nearest ohm, 725 ohms. The rest of the resistors, I've already listed their values in the table because they were given in my original problem. And this table shows what I need to find. Now, organizing it in a table like this can help you keep track of what you need to find and what you need to know in order to find it. 
Ohm's law is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in a circuit. In order to find any, any of the three, you need to know the two others. So looking at the table, if you ever find two of the values, you can use Ohm's law to find the third. The next thing I would do on my table is since I already know the total voltage, I can list that. It's 9 volts. And since Ohm's law tells me I need two of the three variables to find the third, I can now find the total current. That would be 9 volts divided by 725 ohms. If I do that on my calculator, I get 12.42178574 milliamps. But I'll round that, let's say, to the nearest uh, hundredth of a milliamp, so I'll do 12.42 milliamps. From my original circuit, I can see that the current splits through R1, 2, and 3, but combines together again to go through R4. That means I4 would be the same as the total current. And now that I have I4 and R4, I can use Ohm's law to find the voltage drop on, on resistor 4, because that would just be resistance times current. So I'll use 12.42 milliamps times 100 ohms, and I get 1.24 volts. For the next step, I'm going to use one of my redraws that shows all of resistors 1, 2, and 3 combined in parallel as a single resistor. If I think of it that way, all the current would be passing through that resistor. Then that tells me I can use the total current times that resistance to find the voltage drop on that resistor, that imaginary resistor. So I would take 12.42178574 milliamps and times that by combined resistance, I get 3.32 volts. Remember that 3.32 volts is actually the same voltage drop on R1, R2, and R3 as shown in our color-coded diagram. Since the voltage drops are the same on all three resistors, I can enter the 3.32 volts for V1, V2, and V3. And now looking at my chart, I can see that I have R1 and V1, so I can solve using Ohm's law for I1, for the current passing through resistor 1, and the same for current 2 and current 3. So I'll use 3.32 volts divided by 560 ohms to get current 1, which is 5.93 milliamps. Current 2, I use 3.32 volts divided by 890 ohms to get 3.73 milliamps. And current 3 is 3.32 volts divided by 1,200 ohms to give me 2.77 milliamps. Now remember from our color coding, that I can't say that the voltage drop on R5 is the same as the voltage drop on R6 or R7. They're going to be different. But if I look at my chart, I do know that all the rest of the voltage, the remaining voltage, it has to be dropped on R5 to get to zero volts where it's connected to ground. So if I think about, I already know that some of the voltage has been used up on dropping on R1, some of it's been used up on R4, and the rest must be dropped on R5. So if I take the voltage drop on 1, 2, or 3, which is 3.32 volts, add the voltage drop on number 4, which is 1.24 volts, if I take those both and subtract them from the, the total voltage we had to begin with, 9 volts, that will give me the remaining voltage, which is the voltage dropped across R5, 4.44 volts. So now I have V5 and R5, and I can use Ohm's law to calculate I5. 6.08 milliamps. Now going back to my original circuit again, I can see that now that I know the current passing through R5, whatever's left over must be going through R6 and R7. The total current and subtract current 5 and that would give me the current through 6 and 7. And because they're in series, the same current flows through each one. And now I know current 6 and resistor 6 so I can calculate the voltage drop on 6. And the voltage drop across resistor 7 would be 6.34 milliamps times 200 ohms which gives me 1.27 volts. 1.27 volts. And now I've completed my problem solving for every voltage drop, every current, and every resistance in the circuit.